right, let's get in tune. The old way that people used to get in tune in a situation like this would be just to play the notes, and I'll do that. That's how Pete Seeger started his, uh, the record that went along with his very amazing and wonderful book, How to Play the Five String Banjo, which is just hitting the note. And if you have the ear to hear that, you can tune to that note. That's the first string, that's D. Second string is B. Third string is G. Fourth string is D. The fifth string, the short string here, top string, is G. Another way that people have tuned is by tuning one string to the next string and the next string and the next string and so forth. And if you, for instance, start by getting your fourth string in tune with a piano or a tuning fork. And then to tune the third string, you take your whatever finger and fret the fifth fret of the fourth string, fourth string, fifth fret. And to have this G tuning, your third string should be in tune with the fourth string when you do that. Then, to tune the second string, you go to the fourth fret of the third string, third string, fourth fret, and tune the second string. Now, there's a little problem with doing that, which I'll explain in a minute, but I'll just keep going. Now, your second string theoretically would be in tune. To tune the first string, you compare it with the second string at the third fret. And that should be the same note. And it, now that your first string is tune, in tune, fret the fifth fret of the first string, and to get the fifth string in tune, those should be the same note. The fifth string should be in tune with the fifth fret of the first string. So fifth fret of the fourth, fourth fret of the third, third fret of the second, fifth fret of the first. Now the thing that I want to point out is once you, if you fret the fourth fret of the third string, that tends to go a little bit sharp. So what I'll do is, once I pretty much get them in tune, the best way to tune the second string is compare it to the first string. And if you fret it at the third fret of the first string, that's a little more accurate doing it that way. It has to do with a well-tempered scale, but we don't need to worry about that at all. Okay, now for, for people with good ears and uh, people that have the ability to tune their own notes to this, that's fine. But in modern technology, run amok, no, not run amok, actually it's very handy. Uh, people these days use tuners, and this is the kind I use. Uh, it's an Intelli tuner, and what I like about it is that it has a little light when you turn it on, and when you play the note, it has a little arrow and it lines up in the middle you know you're in tune. And this thing affixes to the end of the headstock, just like that. And so what you do is you hit, hit your string. Let's say I'm going to put it a little out of tune on purpose. It sounds wonderfully horrible. So if you hit the third string, which is the out of tune string right now, I'm tuning it up. And as soon as the arrow lines up right in the middle, then you're in tune. And you do this with any string. And it gives you the name of the string right there. So, and what the thing I like about the Intelli is that it does have this green light, so if you're playing on stage and you're off to the side and maybe the light isn't on your banjo and you can't quite see what's going on with the tuner with that light on, you can so you can watch it, and people might think you're watching the World Series or something. They, you might be watching a TV show. But uh, So anyway, tuners are a huge boon to humankind in the banjo world, and guitar world for that matter. 
So uh, I do recommend that you go out and buy a tuner that you might spend 30, 40, 50 dollars, something in that neighborhood. Um, but I do recommend the Intelli.